What's the difference between persistent or, and recurrent hypoparathyroidism? I'm Dr. Bob Aklaro, Center for Advanced Parathyroid Surgery. Persistent hypoparathyroidism is when you have a successful parathyroid surgery and then your numbers come up and you are diagnosed with hypoparathyroidism again within a year of having had the surgery. Recurrent is when it happens more than a year later. The two reasons that I, that I found that people have persistent hyperparathyroidism is one, if you have one very large parathyroid tumor, this one, right, which produces a lot of PTH, but at the same time, you have a smaller tumor producing very little PTH. And that smaller microscopic tumor won't be visible on any scan, radio guidance won't show it, PTH testing won't show it. And so when you do surgery, and you remove this enlarged parathyroid, within that next year, this, this gland can glow, grow and show itself, right? That's one. The second manifestation is if someone has parathyroid hyperplasia, which means all of the parathyroid cells in all the glands are abnormal, but they're just overactive by just a slight bit. And then on top of it, this person develops a parathyroid adenoma, a tumor right on top of that hyperplasia. Right? And that hyperplasia starts producing a lot of PTH while the normals are producing, while the hyperplastic parathyroid glands are producing very little. Right? And this basically hijacks the system. And when you remove this one, over the ensuing year, these parathyroids get bigger and bigger and show themselves. So the, those are the two reasons that I have found for persistent hyperparathyroidism. In terms of recurrent hyperparathyroidism, when you have a parathyroid tumor develop in one gland from one cell, then becoming more a tumor by growing more and more, and turns into this tumor that's producing a lot of PTH and hijacks the system, while the normal parathyroid glands that were all producing the same amount of PTH, because they don't have to work, they shrivel up and get smaller. So when you remove this abnormal parathyroid here, your PTH number will drop dramatically from 120 in this case to 22, well within the normal range. Now, if you give this person some time, these shriveled up parathyroids will get back to their normal size and function appropriately. Now, if this person 10 years later, two years later, three years later, starts developing a tumor in one of the Plans, it slowly grows and grows and grows until it turns into a tumor, a parathyroid adenoma, and this person now has hyperparathyroidism sometime later, which again needs to be treated. The chance of this happening is anywhere between 3 to 14% for someone who had a parathyroid adenoma surgery.